you're all well. Welcome back to day three of the daily edit. So far, so good. I feel like for my Sunday videos, I'm always gonna try and put up like a classic, you know? So we're doing a monthly favorites today, my February favorites to be exact. And this one is gonna be slightly different for reasons that I'll explain in a minute, but there's lights, there's a fancy camera. There's even a microphone. I know, we're getting very technical here for the daily edit. You know the drill with these kinds of videos. I talk through my favorite skincare items of the month, then makeup style, and also a couple of random things at the end. But the reason why I'm starting here, instead of my bathroom wrapped in a towel with like dripping wet hair, like I usually do, is because I opened up my skincare cupboards and I was like, actually, all of my favorites are basically the same as the previous month. I was like, oh, we'll need a skin food light. And then I checked and I was like, oh yeah, mentioned that in January. Everything that I love in there, everything that I've been using a ton this month are things that I've already mentioned a million and one times before. So I will link up my skincare favorites from 2018. If you wanna check that out, that has kind of all of the hard hitters, but I thought instead I would just talk you through a couple of things that are new to my skincare routine that I really want to try, just to have a little chat about them. I know that's not really the point of a favourites video, but just to touch on skincare a little bit, because skincare is literally my favourite thing in the world. Um, if you saw my Canadian beauty haul that I did with Alana, you would have seen that I picked up all the Josh Rosebrook. Um, I think I also picked up a miniature of the Hydrating Accelerator, which is just the best thing ever as well. But here I've got the Nutrient Day Cream Tinted Broad Spectrum SPF 30, and also the Vital Balm Cream, which Alana is a huge, huge fan of. This is more like a daily moisturizer. This is more of an overnight kind of treatment, a very thick balm for your skin, um, which is great because I'm kind of dehydrated. I'm really enjoying both of these upon like first application, but I just wanted to throw out there that Josh Rosebrook is really expensive in the UK. I didn't realize just what a bargain I got getting these in Canada. So I feel like if you're heading to Canada or the US anytime soon, stock up there because there's definitely a bit of a markup in the UK, which is cool. I still absolutely adore these products and would most probably pay that high price tag for them. Um, but yeah, I just wanna throw that out there that this is a great brand if you're heading there stock up and if not just pick up the hydrating accelerator do yourself a favor it's the best face mist ever full stop the other two things that i want to mention are two things that i have been sent and i actually wasn't going to talk about this one because the packaging that came with it was so horrendous and wasteful that it really paid me off quite frankly so drunk elephant sort out that the recycling and rubbish people like absolutely hate me as it is uh, this is from drunk elephant this is their how do you say this the a passioni passion passiony oh. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that, but it's basically their retinol cream with 1% retinol in it. Um, I've only tried this once, so this is not a favorite by any stretch of the imagination, but just in case you tried it, I was like, let's get a conversation going here. Let me know in the comments if you've given this a go, how you find best using it. Um, I've heard kind of mixed reviews. Some people finding this really, really strong, like literally like burning off a layer of their face and making them quite dry. So when I used it the other day, I used it with a pump of the May Lindstrom Youth Dew because it says on the back that you could mix it with any drunk elephant cream or oil. But let's face it, any cream or oil. And I woke up in the morning and I didn't see a huge difference in my skin. Like it looks fine, but I don't think it looks any better than it normally would. So do I need to brave it and just go in like neat with this? Thoughts, comments, let me know. The other thing is the cutest little tube ever. This is from Kiehl's. This is their ultra light daily UV defense, but their aqua gel is their SPF 50, but in gel format. I cannot wait to give this a go. I have a feeling it comes out later this month. If I can find a link for it, I'll pop it down below, but I'm a big fan of the original formula, which is like a cream. To be fair, it's not a thick cream. It's actually really nicely absorbed. SPF facial cream, um, but I'm very excited to give this a go just because I feel like Kiehl's do incredible SPFs. They're like my favorite. It's basically the only SPF that I use. I've been using a drunk elephant one recently and I do enjoy that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to like shine a light on this because I know there's a load of you who also love the SPF 50. An aqua gel version, cute, heads up. Okay, onto the good stuff and onto actual favorites, things that I have been using an absolute ton in the past four weeks. Um, if you missed my January favorites, I will link that up there for you. Everything that I mentioned there, I still absolutely adore. And I was really convinced that I'd mentioned this product in that video, but I hadn't. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I use this in the shade Too Light. I bought this when it was released last year, and I feel like there's just a lot of confusion around this product. Like, is it a primer? Is it a highlighter? Is it a foundation? It's, it's weirdly all of those things. It's kind of whatever 
you want it to be. I use it as almost like a mixing base for foundation to make it really super dewy and glowy. It comes on a big doe for applicator. Not crazy about that. I would love this product so much more if it came in like a little pumpy tube, like it cosmetic style, that would be glorious. I kind of hate the idea that you're like dipping in and putting it on your face, um, but I just take it kind of all over, dabble it around, and I just find it adds a really nice glow to the skin without looking too metallic. If I'm having a particularly dry day, I would just buff this all in and have like a no makeup vibe going on. Um, but I tend to put a foundation onto my Zoeva like Kabuki brush and blend it over the top and kind of make a, a smush on my face. This is the NARS Sheer Glow in Duville. Um, I just recently picked this back up. Oh, it's just a throwback. Like every now and again, I rebuy this foundation and I do find it a little bit kind of thick and actually a bit drying on me but when I combine it with that Charlotte Tilbury I feel like I get a really good colour match one which is nice um, but also it just frees up the product a little bit makes it a little bit more spreadable and just adds a really nice glow to the skin um, you could use this as a highlighter apply your foundation and then just dab this on the high points um, it comes in I think 10 different colors and the coverage of it is so minimal I feel like everyone could make it match somehow but yeah I saw um, Samantha Samantha Ravendahl I love her videos I'll link her channel down below I saw her use it she's a big fan and I was like you know what gonna get it back out really pleased that I did, um, loving the effect for winter dullness. So I've thrown some more makeup on my face and everything that I've used I will write down in the description box below along with everything that I've shown in this video but if I was to do it on camera we would be here hours. So on to the next favourite, it's from Chanel, I was very kindly sent this, it's their Ombre Premier eyeshadow. This is their cream eyeshadow formula. I think it's replaced the um, Illusion On ones that I absolutely adored. I've got a couple of these and I really, really like them. I love a cream eyeshadow. I just find them a really nice texture to wear, a really easy texture to blend in on the eye. And when I wear them with something like the NARS Smudge Proof, you know what I mean, Pro Prime, blah, 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 they last really, really well with a primer. They're just a very interesting texture and they've got great colours. I really enjoy the colour memory. Um, I think this could be possibly a limited edition shade. It's called Patine Bronze, which when I saw it I was like, yep, yeah, that's bronze, absolutely love it. However, it's definitely not a warm bronze or as warm as I normally go for. Um, it's definitely more of a cool bronze on the eye. So it's something, <laughs> it's something a little bit different for me. It's not, it's still very neutral. It's just slightly different to what I've been wearing normally. Um, you could apply it with your fingers. Um, a lot of the time I do, I just can't be bothered to get my fingers all dirty here. Um, so I'm just taking this on a Zoeva. This is the 288 crease brush that I absolutely adore. I feel like it's got a real greeny, khaki quality about it. It's a really interesting color, almost a bit um, MAC Club actually, and I loved. MAC Club. I like to apply it and then just blend it out around the edges with a slightly bigger brush. This is a MAC, is it 224? And taking away any excess that's in that corner. But I just think it's, yeah, it's kind of something a little bit different. I feel like the Chanel limited edition launches are always really solid and that there's at least one item that I'm like, yep, that's really good. Why can't it be permanent? And I think this is uh, the one from the latest collection. So if you like these colors, you want something a little bit different to your usual warm orangey bronzes, then um, this could be a good one for you. So that's the eyes done. I was gonna do a nice little like sped up section for you there so you could see me doing the rest of my eyes, but my camera cut out. I then spoke for about another 15 minutes and basically rounded up the favorites video and none of it recorded. So rewind. <laughs> That is the finished eye look. I've just put on a shed load of mascara and I like it. I feel like when you get quite close, you kind of almost see like a lime green, like goldy penny shift to it, which is just so beautiful and very much unlike anything else that I have in my collection. Is it groundbreaking? No, not particularly, but it's very different for me as someone who wears very orangey based eyeshadows on their eyes basically 100% of the time, um, so I really like it. It's something a bit different, go have a squat, squash? <laughs> I've just finished my squash, I'm feeling quite thirsty. Obviously I have squash on the brain. Go have a swatch, let me know what you think, if it's limited edition, might be one to pick up if you fancy something a little bit different on your eyes. Um, but finally, 
on to a lip product that is my final makeup favourite. And I actually did just throw on a lipstick. Um, it's a Becca lipstick. It's for an upcoming video. I'm testing it out. And I really like it. Um, and I'm actually not going to put my favourite on my lips today um, for reasons that will become clear when I show you the colour of this. It is from Laura Mercier and it is their Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Bring it. Now, I've mentioned before styling, which was like an orangey peach kind of colour, and also vibe, which was by far my most worn lipstick from last year. I absolutely adored that lipstick. It's so good. And basically, that's like a peachy pink nude. However, Bring It is a bright, kind of rosy fuchsia. I know. Um, I think it's all because of Alana. I obviously stayed with her earlier in the month, and she just wears a bold lip so wickedly with very neutral makeup and just looks like an absolute angel when she's wearing it. So I was very inspired. I'm not sure if I did, I feel like I maybe did wear this in Canada. Yeah, I think I wore it in the Get Ready With Us that we did for her channel. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Um, check out that video if you wanna see me with it on. I'll also like pop a photo here if you wanna see kind of how it looks. But for me, I feel like my eyes are a little bit jazzy. I mean, they're not, jazzy for most, but for me, they're kind of jazzy. They're a bit party party, you know? When I wear this kind of shade, I do a very flat matte eye or put something like the Kevin Aquan um, sculpting powder just in my crease for a bit of definition. I don't tend to do much. So I'm not gonna put it on today, but just know it's a glorious color. I will swatch it on the back of my hand for you. I mean, look at that, look at that. It's not a candy yum yum like neon shade and you literally just have to press this onto your lips to get that pigment. Um, and I love the delivery of this. I love that it's in a twist up nib. It's so easy to apply. Like now when I've got like a big lipstick, like I don't know what to do with it because these are just so handy and like nimble and just very easy. It's basically like having a lip liner and a lipstick in one. So I adore this lipstick formula, easily my favorite new lipstick release from the past 12 months. And um, But this shade, kind of fun, kind of springy, I'm into it. Now we're gonna have a brief intermission from the fancy camera setup, and I'm gonna show you my style favorites in my wardrobe, like always. It's a sun trap in here today. It's absolutely heavenly, but on to some of my wardrobe favorites. And actually, I feel like this month, I've really defaulted to some complete basics. I've just wanted to be cozy, I've wanted to be warm, um, I've wanted things to be really, really practical. And the first thing I actually keep hung up on the back of this door, because it's definitely something that I wear more around the house rather than a fashion piece, although I just cannot stop wearing it. It's from And Other Stories. I got this last year or maybe even the Christmas before. It's a high neck jumper that basically folds back on itself and it's just black and it's baggy and it's absolutely glorious. I will link some photos here of me wearing it, um, but it, it's very slouchy, but like I said, I just can't stop wearing it. So although for me, it's more of a loungewear piece, I've been wearing it out. I've been wearing it for photos. I've been wearing it for filming. I've been wearing it to meetings, but ultimately it's just a very multifunctional piece that I just cannot stop myself from wearing. Um, the next piece is also black. They are the redone, stove pipe high waisted jeans. My new favorite type of denim, I absolutely adore them. I do have them in a blue as well. One of these is them. Again, I will link a photo for you here. They're very, very pricey. Are they worth that price tag? No, I would say you can get really great denim on the high street from Topshop and Urban Outfitters. That's what I would really recommend. But there's something about the fit of these, there's something about the cut of these, they feel kind of old school, kind of vintage, and I really love that. I've never had much luck with vintage jeans. I always go in, I just can't find the right size, the right fit, the right wash. So these are great if you're looking for that slightly vintage, slightly like dad denim vibe, um, but you just haven't been lucky enough to find a vintage pair. I feel like the fit of those, mm, love. My final favorite is um, this one. It's my Saint Laurent tote bag. I actually keep it like hung up in here and it's got scarves and hats and belts and all sorts in. It's just an accessory holder basically. Again, I will link some photos here of me wearing it. It's what I use when I travel. It's what I use when I need to carry a shed load of stuff around with me. It's what I use whenever I need to carry my laptop. Um, I actually met so many people in the last two months who were like, 
Thank you for your recommendation for this. It was a splurge, I made that splurge and I'm so happy that I did. I really love it, it's such a great piece. That's always great to hear. And there are some fab dupes for it, some fab leather dupes for it as well. I'll link those down below for you. But if you fancy a bit of a treat yourself purchase, I highly, highly recommend this bag because I just use it so much. Now to round up the video with my favourite kind of random things of the month. And I feel like this, where is it gone? It's here. I feel like this isn't particularly random. It's definitely more of a beauty favourite. And it is a OPI Nail Envy, which I have enjoyed using, I want to say like since I started blogging, maybe like one or two years in. So we're talking like seven, eight years I have been a fan of this product. And I've used it for various different things. I've used it as its intended purpose, which is a nail strengthener. I've used it as a base coat, which is kind of a couple of years ago. I'd use this as a base coat. I'd do my color over the top, stick a top coat on, done. And now I basically wear it as my like one and only <laughs> nail product. Um, I loved traveling around. It was so much fun. But you know when you get to that point where you're like, I think I'm ready to come home. And it was like, I think I'm ready to come home. I'm excited to see Mark. I'm excited to like eat home cooked food and sleep in my own bed. And, and put this on. I was like, I really want to do my nails. Um, on the way to Toronto, I literally painted on like a nude polish as I was walking out the door and it smudged and it had like fingerprints in it and it just looked really, really, really terrible. And so I was so excited to come home, take it off and just go for this. It's, it's just a clear nail polish. Like, does it strengthen my nails? I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's a placebo effect because I feel like it does somewhat. It's also really good if you've been having gel a lot on your nails recently, which I did back at the beginning of January, I think I did. And whenever I take it off, I'm like, my nails aren't looking fab underneath it. And I feel like this kind of restores them back to health and helps with any flaking. They were getting a little bit flaky again. Um, and I feel like that's really helped out. So once a week, I just put on a couple of coats of this. And then once the week is up, I take it off, I start again. Um, not the most fancy or glam nail routine in the world, but it works for me. I have two books down here, um, some recent reads. At the time of recording this video, I am three and a half books into my 30 book challenge. So I'm not behind, but I wouldn't say I'm ahead. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, because we've got like a couple of days, I'm hoping that I would have got to the end of my current read. Um, but my read before that was from Sally Rooney and it is Conversations with Friends. Um, I really enjoyed Normal People, really enjoyed that too. This is her first book, Normal People is her second book, so I read them like in reverse. And she has an amazing way of writing about love, I guess, and relationships and confusing relationships, perhaps unconventional relationships. Um, they're really page turner books. And with this one, I read the majority of it actually on the train, like on the train to Bristol and then on the train from Bristol to Norwich. And I just really, really enjoy her writing. I really enjoy their books. Um, you, you really want to get to the end. You get to know the characters and you, you want to know what happens and how it kind of ends up. So highly recommend this book if you're looking for a new read. And then my current one is Michelle Obama Becoming. Oh my word, Michelle, you are a fabulous lady. This book is so motivating, it's so beautiful. I'm halfway through, so I'm hoping I'm gonna have a couple of like good reading days and get through this hopefully by the end of February. So by the time you see this, I should be on to my next book. But she's a beautiful writer, a beautiful human inside and out. I just have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I've cried three times. Um, how she talks about love and loss is just like, oh, it gets you right in there. I would say it's a chunky book. It's a hefty read for sure. It's I think over 400 pages. So if you're short on time, this is definitely not a quick book to get through. It's big, the pages are big, I'd say the text is quite small. Um, if you're short on time, get the audio book because, I mean, her voice is just like absolute heaven. I can imagine that is so, so good. But it's a best-selling book for a reason. Um, on the week that my book was released, I was the third best-selling hardback non-fiction and Michelle was the first. So I'm like, being beaten by Michelle, I'm not even mad about it. She's a great lady. Um, yeah, really, really love this book. So if you have any more recommendations for me, I'm all ears. I always love to hear what you're reading, what you'd recommend. And I do also have a Goodreads account that is linked down below if you want to get the latest updates on that. That's it. I say it like it's a five minute video and I'm pretty sure this video is going to be about 25 minutes long. So thank you for sticking with me till the end. I really hope you enjoyed this video as always. 
Everything will be linked down below for you along with like what I'm wearing, the makeup that I applied when I was off camera, all of that stuff. But I really hope you're enjoying the daily edit. Tomorrow there's like a capsule wardrobe weekly planning video along with a clothing care video coming after that. So there's gonna be some style videos coming your way at the beginning of next week. But 6 p.m. every day, there is a new video. Please give it some love, that'd be so nice. I never asked for a thumbs up. That'd be so lovely. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, write a comment, all of that jazz, and I will see you same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching, bye.